When you think of gambling, it's hard not to think of Las Vegas. It has more hotel rooms than in all of New York City, filled by more than 30 million people each year, all of them dreaming of returning home rich. Greetings, my name is Steve Miller. I'm a math professor here at Williams College, and I want to talk to you today about the implications of some of the math you've seen in high school and the billion dollar gambling industry in Las Vegas. In particular, I want to show you some of the hidden connections between Fibonacci numbers and roulette. Roulette is a very popular game in Vegas. There are 18 red numbers, 18 black, and two green. You spin, and you bet a dollar, say, on red. If it comes up red, you win a dollar. If not, you've lost a dollar. The game is so simple, many people believe they've cracked its secrets and can become rich. Let me tell you why they think so. So to simplify the analysis, let's imagine that there's no greens on the wheel. So half the time we get a red, half the time we get a black. So here's the strategy people like to use. Bet a dollar on red. If it comes up red, we've won a dollar. If it comes up black, which happens half the time, we're down a dollar. So now, if we've lost a dollar, we now bet two. So half the time red comes up, and we've now netted a dollar. We had lost a dollar on the first one, we've just bet two dollars, so negative one plus two is one. Half the time a black comes up though, and now we're down three dollars, because we lost one dollar the first time, and we've now just lost two. What do we do if a black comes up? We now bet four dollars on red. So what happens? Half the time a red comes up, and we now net a dollar. Why? We lost a dollar on the first spin, we lost two dollars on the second spin, but then we gained four dollars on the third spin, and negative one minus two plus four is one. What happens if we got a black? Well, in this case, we're now down seven dollars because we lost a dollar, and then two dollars, and then four dollars. So we continue like this. Notice every single path ends with us netting one dollar. Each time we double our previous bet, and we eventually win one dollar. That's why this strategy is called double plus one. You keep doubling your bet, and eventually you're plus one. So lather, rinse, repeat. Every time we do this, we make a dollar. So why are we making this video? Why aren't we in Vegas playing the strategy and making money? Remember, Vegas is not in business to make you money. Someone has to pay for Mr. Smith's suits. We're missing something. What is it? So what are we missing here? Well, first, we may need to place enormously large bets. Imagine we have 20 blacks in a row. If that's the case, our next bet is over a million dollars. We need more than just the willingness to make such a large bet, we actually need the money for the bet. As a mathematician, I don't mind assuming things to help me solve a problem. So let's assume we have an eccentric rich uncle. He's eccentric. He won't give us the money directly, but he will bankroll us at the table. Again, this is unrealistic, but if we can't even beat Vegas in this case, we have no chance in the real world. The second issue is that even though our rich uncle gives us the money to make the bet, he can't make Vegas take the bet. The casinos know math very well, and they place house limits on each table. They're like speed limits. There's a minimum and a maximum bet that we can make. The problem is we can very quickly reach the point where we need to place a huge bet, and even if we have the money to do so, we can't force the casino to take it. So it all comes down to the number of bets we can make before we exceed the house limit. And trust me, Vegas calculates this very carefully. Let's assume five consecutive blacks will bankrupt us. Let's let PN be the probability we do not have five consecutive blacks in n spins, and Q of n the probability we do. Notice they have to sum to one because one of these two things happen. So let's find a formula for PN. So we start half the time we spin a red, half the time we spin a black. What's the probability we don't have five consecutive blacks in n tosses given that the first one is red? Well, the red can't start a string of five blacks, so it's like we're spinning again, trying to avoid five consecutive blacks with n minus one spins. That probability, by definition, is pn minus one. Over here, however, since we started with a black, that could contribute to five straight blacks. So we have to be a bit more careful. We spin again, half the time we get a red, half the time we get a black. Black, red can't start a string of five consecutive blacks. We have n minus two spins remaining. By definition, the probability we don't have five consecutive blacks is pn minus two. We continue like this, and after five spins, we have black, 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 red. That can't start five consecutive blacks. The probability of not getting five consecutive blacks in n minus five remaining spins is just pn minus five. 
But notice if we have black, 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 then we must have five consecutive blacks in our n spins. And so the probability of avoiding that is just zero. So we now get the following beautiful formula for p of n. p of n is half pn minus 1, because half the time we land here, plus a half times a half pn minus 2, because that's the probability we land here, and so on. So notice once we know five consecutive terms, we know the next, and we can just walk down the line. So all we need is the first five values of p. Well, if we spin the wheel at most four times, we can't have five consecutive blacks. Therefore, p0, p1, p2, p3, and p4 are all 1. And then plugging this into the formula, we get p5 is 31 over 32, which is exactly what you would get if you directly analyze it. So marching down the line, we see if the wheel is spun 100 times, there's already over an 80% chance of going bankrupt. Math is filled with surprising connections. Your high school algebra is living the high life at the roulette tables in Vegas. So remember your math classes the next time you go there to gamble. Vegas did.